In the fall of 1985, I collected seed from one crepe myrtle downtown Stillwater to begin a breeding program. Flowers were a dark pink and foliage medium green, but the plant had a somewhat different look. My hypothesis was twofold. One, that by selectively combing through large populations over multiple generations of seedlings, plants resistant to powdery mildew could be found. And two, by working with straight indica plants, even more vivid flower colors could be created. From this beginning to present, roughly one half million crepe myrtle seedlings have been grown through 16 generations. Most early seedlings were culled when quite small because they had severe powdery mildew. At all stages, including while planting in the field, any plant with mildew or other leaf malady were discarded. When planted in the field, even the first and second generation seedlings were plagued by powdery mildew. But a few had less mildew than others, and these were chosen as seed parents for the next generations. By the fifth generation, a few seedlings were mildew free except under extreme conditions. This confirmed one hypothesis, that resistance to disease problems could be eliminated or at least minimized. Each fall I collect seeds from seedlings with one or more desirable traits. Seeds are clean, planted in flats, and covered lightly in a greenhouse in the spring. As seeds germinate, they are transplanted into 60 cell root maker trays. As soon as danger of frost has passed, seedlings are moved out of doors in full sun and wind to develop tough, sturdy plants with great root systems. Once seedlings are well rooted, they are ready for transplanting into the field. Field soil is fertilized, tilled, and treated with a pre-emergent herbicide. Drip lines are laid down rows with an emitter every two feet. Planting consists of creating a hole at each emitter that matches shape of the root ball and then drop a seedling into the cavity. Depth of the cavity is only slightly deeper than the root ball. By stepping on one side of the hole, the soil is firmed around the root ball. As soon as the row is planted, drip line is positioned closer to the plants and water is turned on. Rarely do we lose a plant. This planted field contains about 12,000 seedlings spaced two feet in the row and 10 feet between rows. Typically, the seedlings are evaluated for four to five years. Rows of young plants are walked regularly, watching for unique features and checking for harvester ant nests and tomato hornworms. Both pests can defoliate and kill soft young plants quickly. By early August, typically plants have grown sufficiently so these pests are no longer a problem, but evaluation continues. By early September, all seedlings are well established and some seedlings will be 15 to 20 inches tall. A few seedlings will flower the first year, while others may not flower until the second, third, or even fourth years. Foliage color and other growth characteristics are displayed and evaluated. Typically, the second year seedlings from some parents are mostly flowering. For example, note several rows of red flowers just above the center in the photo. By contrast, several rows below have only a few plants flowering. In addition to foliage color, form, vigor, and other characteristics, earliness to flower, length to flower show, are features for which parents are selected for the next generation of seedlings. Another field of about 15,000 seedlings. Note plants in the foreground with huge seedling variation. Some seedlings were short and bushy, others tall and slender, some vigorous and full of flowers or vigorous and no flowers at all, yet all were the same age with the same growing conditions and are seedlings from the same parent. The original focus was on developing crepe myrtle with desirable characteristics, high disease tolerance, and true red flowers. Once that goal was reached, however, seedlings with cherry red flowers became common. When an outstanding seedling was found, it was moved to an area of stock plants and evaluated further. The plant foreground left was named Pink Velour. The plant to the left of the small vehicle was named Red Rocket, while the plant in between, as well as the one to the right, were rejected and never released. After about eight generations of seedlings, powdery mildew was mostly eliminated as a problem, but occasionally a susceptible seedling will occur. Note the plant in the center, chalky white with mildew, while plants to the left and right have none, even though the branches are touching. Leaf retention and fall color are also factors considered when evaluating seedlings and parents from which to save seed for another generation. Note the dark green seedling at left, the center seedling with red fall color, and the seedling at right that had dropped many leaves without coloring. All three seedlings were from the same parent. 
Crepe myrtle seedlings are extremely variable, thus allowing selection for various traits. Stillwater, Oklahoma is at the upper limit of USDA hardiness zone seven. Winter temperatures typically drop to single digits and occasionally below zero and snow occurs most winters. Our geographic location allows selection and development of more cold hardy cultivars. When a seedling with desirable features is found, it is labeled for location and date and during May of the following year cuttings are taken. Softwood cuttings are placed under mist and typically are well rooted after 18 to 24 days and ready to be transplanted. Seedlings that root poorly from softwood cuttings or suffer shock when removed from the mist are discarded. Rooted cuttings that perform well are transplanted into one gallon containers and evaluated further. By August, many rooted cuttings have made considerable growth, some as much as four feet, and some are flowering well. By the end of that first growing season, many of these selections will be discarded while a few will be overwintered and shifted to three gallon containers for another year of evaluation. Pink Velour was selected for the striking wine new foliage, dark wine green old foliage, and shrill pink flowers as well as disease resistance. It grows at a moderate pace and with age will reach a height of 12 to 15 feet and 10 feet wide. This plant in a white root trapper 30 gallon container is four years old and seven feet tall. Red Rocket has huge clusters of red flowers and dense dark green leaves. Flower clusters may reach 20 inches from top to bottom. It is a very upright grower with limited horizontal spread. Plants 10 years old and never pruned in the field are 16 feet tall with about eight feet of spread. Red rocker grows somewhat faster and has more dense foliage than dynamite, but flower color is nearly identical. Dynamite has bright cherry red flowers against dark green mature foliage. When dynamite is in full flower, it is a showstopper and gets grave reviews. Burgundy cotton has dramatic red wine foliage that rivals red tip Fotini in the south or purple leaf plum in the north. Comments range from fantastic foliage to I wish it did not bloom. Burgundy cotton flowers can be very light pink in early summer when temperatures are mild, but snow white in the heat of summer. New growth on all whit cultivars of crepe myrtle patented by Lace Bark is a distinct contrast with green of other cultivars. New growth ranges from wine, red wine, to purple, and may remain showy for several weeks. New growth on Rhapsody in pink is distinctly purple and provides a spring contrast with most other plants. As the leaves age, they slowly change to dark wine green. A single flower of dynamite appears bright red even on a dull overcast day. Many flowers have petals sufficiently dense to prevent various insects from completing pollination. As a result, at our location in Oklahoma, out of 100 blooms, only 15 to 25 will be pollinated and produce a seed capsule. The pure white summer flower of burgundy cotton is open with pronounced stamens, yet the flowers are partially sterile with only about 50% of the flowers producing a seed capsule. Occasionally, a select group has been granted a tour of the research farm. Here, master gardeners from the Linnaeus Gardens in Tulsa, Oklahoma, are learning about selection and development of new plants at Lace Bark. I enjoy maintaining and evaluating the fields and watching for clues that may lead to a new feature or color one or more generations down the road. Raspberry Sunday was my first seedling selected, patented, and released. I selected it because it's a vigorous upright grower with limited width. Ten-year-old plants never pruned in the field are 14 feet tall and about eight feet wide. Flowers early in the season are raspberry red and pink with touches of white and are distinctly fragrant. When the season gets hot, flowers are entirely dark pink. Raspberry Sunday is typically two weeks later to begin flowering, but is sterile so no seeds appear. In Oklahoma, Raspberry Sunday provides consistent red-orange fall color. Dynamite was named from a notation in record books. These flowers are dynamite. The cherry red flowers are eye-catching from considerable distance, especially with the mass planting. Dynamite quickly became the industry standard for the unique cherry red color. I chose pink velour because it has a shrill pink bloom unlike any other pink flowered crepe myrtle with the dark wine foliage and shrill pink flowers. Pink velour is dramatic all growing season. 
Pink Velour is the most cold tolerant of our eight selections to date and may be the most cold tolerant among all crepe myrtle cultivars. The massive flower clusters on Red Rocket are especially impressive and virtually identical to dynamite. Flowering begins at the base of the structure and progresses to the top, thus extending the flower show. Tightwad Red is a true dwarf that almost did not happen. Plants five years old may only be three or four feet tall. New foliage in spring is dark wine purple, then slowly changes to green. Growth habit is a very dense, low mound. Flowers are a medium red like raspberry sundae, but no seed capsules are produced. The original tightwad was four years old in the field with good form and foliage, but no flowers. As I was tearing out the rest of the plants in that particular field, I came to tightwad, got off the tractor, looked the little plant over, raised the flower, and gave it one more year. It flowered profusely the next season. Flower buds on burgundy cotton are crimson, but open to show very light pink flowers during cool weather, but pure white when it is hot. The new foliage is dramatic wine red and contributes to any landscape. Siren Red was a complete surprise. After Dynamite and Red Rocket, an even darker red crepe myrtle seemed unlikely. But Siren Red is darker and is a slower grower with mature height of only eight to 10 feet. Siren Red flowers are very dark red, the color of blood. Unlike the bright red flowers of Dynamite and Red Rocket, which are notable from considerable distance, Siren Red flowers are most showy when viewed more closely. Rhapsody in Pink offers purple new foliage, soft pink flowers, and no seed capsules. A unique feature of Rhapsody in Pink is its capacity to rebloom on the same flower structure. Immediately after the old flowers drop, new flower buds begin to develop in the same location. The result is a continued flower show all season with no peaks and valleys. The gene pool of crepe myrtles is huge and diverse. It is anticipated that at some point in the future, cultivars with excellent wine new foliage and lavender or deep purple blooms will be found that meet our stringent requirements. It also appears that orange or near orange, yellow or blue flowers may also be possible. Plants developed during the first 25 years were considered impossible in the past. The next 25 years may prove just as fruitful.